Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ace and I'm back with another reaction video. Here we go. All right, so I am finally moved out of my old place. I'm in my new house. Uh, it doesn't look that different because the walls are the same color, but this is actually a new house. Um, and in keeping with the theme of something all new, I am onto a brand new era of Madonna. This is actually, it's not a new era for her, but it's a new era for me. Um, we are into album number two, Like a Virgin. So uh, according to Wikipedia, this album came out in 1984. Um, it was produced by Niall Rogers of Chic. So that's interesting. Uh, the very first song on the album is Material Girl. So that's what we're going to get into. I'm looking forward to this. So let's go ahead and get into it. She's fantastic. I knew she'd be a star. She could be. She could be great. She could be a major star. She is a star, George. The biggest star in the universe right now as we speak. <laughs> Those who love the set, the director's got all kinds of things. The director's hot. He's hip. He's here. He's going to be doing all kinds of things. He's going to change the color of the set. I like He's got a great idea for a blue. Don't change anything, George. He touches one thing, he's gone. I swear. He's history. I want to meet her. You got it. Anytime. Name the place. Name anywhere, any street. You got it. Now. Yeah, he's still after me. He just gave me a necklace. I don't know. I think it's real diamonds. Yeah, he thinks he can impress me by giving me expensive gifts. It's nice, though. You want it? All right, let's pause for a minute. Um, so I got to say that the style of this sounds very, very different from the first album. Um, that just, that struck me right away. Um, also, I think I've heard this before. You know, that chorus, that chorus sounds very familiar. So this is all very interesting. Let's keep going.
All right, so Material Girl, let me get into what I think the song is about first. So it seems like the song is basically her saying, you know, what can you do for me? <laughs> like she's got this lifestyle that she either has or wants and expects the guy to be able to indulge her on, on that quest. Um, it's like she's basically saying, you know, can we put our bank accounts together and be a power couple? Or, you know, how much can you wine and dine me before I give you the cat? <laughs> So the song seems to be a reflection of society and pop culture of the times. Uh, the 1980s was the decade of Dallas and Dynasty and Alex Keaton and, you know, yuppies and billionaire boys club and, you know, motivated by mercenary matters, glamour and gluttony. A lot of female songs from that time seem to deal with basically them asking men what they could do for them. You know, how much financial weight he brings to the table. What kind of job do you have? So I think this song really kind of fits into that whole theme. So the song comes off as uh, cheeky and kind of zany. The hook is indelible. It's something that you'll remember even if you don't care much for the song. Again, the song I think goes much further pop than the first album. Uh, I noticed that the song uses organic instruments, you know, unlike the first album where I think it was all programmed music. So that was an interesting shift. Um, I will say that I like the live drum set against the sort of kooky bass line and keyboards. You know, the mis miscellaneous dings and bells, I think was a nice touch. Vocally, Madonna sounds a bit cartoony here to match the sort of wacky tone of the lyrics and music. Um, but I would say despite how slapstick her cadence is, she actually sounds a bit more controlled and confident here than on a lot of the songs on the first album. Uh, I think the robotic sounding male backing vocals offsets things and I think it was a good add on to a song that basically targets men who are Wall Street zombies. Overall, it's an overtly bubbly and girly song with a sort of an unconventional setup. It does sound very dated and of its time, but it's got a charisma and an offbeat humor to it. Um, I guess for those who subscribe to the concept of guilty pleasures, I can see this being one of those songs that one might secretly listen to when no one else is around. The video. So I try not to read too much of the Wikipedia articles before I react to the songs. I usually just read the forward, but I have to admit that this time I cheated and I read the the music video was actually inspired by a Marilyn Monroe movie, uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Um, I haven't seen the movie, but from the stills that I've seen of it, I have to say that this video absolutely seems inspired by or perhaps copied from, from the movie. Um, and I think Madonna really pulled it off. Uh, overall, she looks great in it. You know, she, in her previous videos, had this sort of a... Uh, like sexy street urchin thing going on with the mesh tops and the bare midriffs and whatnot but here she looks like dynasty <laughs> you know so she cleans up very well and i guess the first album netted enough of a profit for her to generate a higher budget for the videos this time around i'm thinking um and she looked like she was about to pop out of that dress at any minute <laughs> so the choreography with the male dancers was well done uh the pink set performance segments i think went with the song but what i really think made the video was the b story uh which cleverly contradicted the song's mercenary theme and really has her you know coming off as not being as shallow as she seemed um the leading man who i think sort of comes off like this kind of like rich prince you know he quickly realizes that she's not going to be as easily won over by material things and so he has to figure out you know, a more genuine way to get at her, you know, after catching on that she's not as attractive, she's more attracted to men with sincerity. And so he has to like sneakily scheme to present himself in a way that's more humble. And he ultimately gets her that way. But, you know, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, how she reacts when she finds out that he's another J.R. Ewing. <laughs> so I would give the song a letter grade of a B minus. Um, Again, the song is kind of funny, you know, and although it's a night and day shift from the urban dance floor tracks on the 83 album, it sort of has this kind of a bebop pop quirkiness to it that gives it charm while making it sound like a novelty anthem of the time, you know, along with songs like, you know, Relax, Don't Do It and Super Bowl Shuffle. <laughs> uh, I would say in a pop culture 80s time capsule, 
I'm sure this song would definitely be added to the mix. The video, I would give a letter grade of an A+. Uh, it was very well done. It looks like it was probably her most expensive video up to that point. Um, and I would go so far as to say that the video actually completes the song. You know, it makes it more intriguing. Overall, I would give the grade... Uh, I would give the song overall a grade of a B plus. You know, admittedly, it's not something that I would casually listen to on repeat, but I understand that it's an iconic song and I get why. But how do you feel about it? How do you feel about Madonna's Material Girl? Leave me some comments, like and subscribe, and until next time, peace.